As the title and thumbnail suggests, this table changed my life. And if you love a good compound interest video, you'll love it too. The table is in the Barefoot Investor book. In this book, Scott Pape has a table that explains compound interest. However, I don't think Scott Pape does the table justice, and I don't think he has explained it well enough. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. It's the table where he shows that a person who starts working at the age of 15 and begins investing straight away, this person saves and invests $5,000 a year and stops after 10 years. We're going to call this person one. Then we have person two, who waits until they have a real job at age 25 before beginning to invest. This person saves and invests $5,000 each year until the age of 60. When I saw this table, I thought this is way too good to be true and I think many others probably did as well. In this video, I'll explain exactly why person one ends up with so much more money. We will compare how much more person one will have if they continued to invest and didn't stop after that 10 years. And we'll see what happens to the numbers if we use a more conservative investment rate. So in the example, person one ends up contributing $50,000 to their investment portfolio over those 10 years, while person two ends up contributing $180,000. The Barefoot Investor uses a 10% return in his example. That's because the S&P 500, which is the 500 top US companies, the historical average has been around about 10.5%. I do like to use a more conservative percentage, so that's why we're going to run those numbers later in this video. In the example, person one's investment portfolio grows to be $2.7 million, while person two's investment portfolio grows to be a bit over $1.6 million despite contributing more to his investment. How magical is that $50,000 turned into $2.7 million? And even for person two, $180,000 turned into $1.64 million, which is still impressive. This is because time is your friend when investing. Charlie Munger has famously said that the big money is not not in the buying and selling, but in the waiting. And here it is in the table from the Barefoot Investor book. It shows where person one stops investing and where person two starts investing. And then there is the final amounts at age 60, which we spoke about earlier. Once I truly understood this table and the impact of investing at a young age, I realized that it was time to stop thinking about investing and just take the plunge. I always thought I had plenty of time, especially when it came to investing for retirement, but this table proved me wrong. Okay, so why is it so? Why does person one end up with so much more money than person two, even though they contributed so much more? And of course, I must mention that the information in this video is for entertainment and general information only. I'm not a financial advisor. You can read my full disclaimer in the description box below. If we look at the year after person one stops investing, their portfolio is worth $87,656. This means that with a 10% return, their portfolio grows by $8,756 the following year without contributing more. This is more than person two who is going to start contributing their $5,000. So just to explain that again, because I think that's the part that isn't explained well in the table. Person one's investment is now worth $87,000. And with a 10% return, their investments are now returning $8,756. Person two has only just started investing $5,000. So that $5,000 is never going to catch up to that $8,756 that person one's investment is growing by. And this video is brought to you by ShareSite. ShareSite is a portfolio tracking tool that I use and love. There is a free plan if you have under 10 holdings and I've used that one for many years. And if you do decide to sign up for a 12 month plan, using my link will save you four months off the purchase price of the annual premium plan. I also wondered what would happen if person one continued to invest and didn't stop after those 10 years. Their portfolio could end up being worth just under $4 million by the age 60, while person two's investments will still be worth that $1.64 million. That's not bad for an extra 50k in contributions from starting earlier. Now, what if we used a more conservative investment return? I'm going to use 7.5%, which gives a bit of a buffer. Or alternatively, it allows for inflation, as it's 10% minus 2.5% for inflation. I know inflation is much more than that, 
that at the moment, but we're talking about averages and hopefully it evens itself out again over time. And I'm going to use my new favorite compound interest calculator from the calculator site. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. I just like it because it has a few more options than my old one. You can add years and months for the time period. And then I like that you can say that you will increase your deposits each year with inflation because most people increase what they are saving over time. Okay, let's see how these results compare with a predicted 7.5% investment return. Person 1 with an investment rate of 7.5% after 10 years and a deposit amount of $5,000 per year, that portfolio could be worth $70,000 and that's just after 10 years. I do like how this calculator from the calculator site puts the data into a table but also as a graph that can be broken down into a monthly or yearly analysis. Now person 1 stops investing after that 10 years but they do leave their portfolio there to compound for another 35 years. I've added in the initial amount as what the portfolio grew to in those first 10 years and then we're not contributing anything more. And at age 60 the portfolio may be worth $889,000. And then with person two, they still have an investment return of 7.5%. They have 35 years to invest as they started 10 years later. They contribute the $5,000 a year for that entire time. And their portfolio may be worth $771,000. So here's the difference. Not as much as with a 10% return, but still person one ends up with more money. This is because for person one at the end of those 10 years, the balance is worth $70,735. And 7.5% of that is $5,305. So again, more than the $5,000 that person two will start contributing with. But what is always the most interesting part is that person one again ends up contributing way less to get to that amount of 889K. They contribute $50,000. And so the total portfolio growth was $839,000, while person two ended up contributing 175 k So their portfolio growth was $596,000. Thanks for listening. Let me know what other videos you would like to see from me. And don't forget, you can also find me on Instagram and Facebook.